morning, Mr. Mwono Mpundu. Uh, I'm Praise Karuma, a lecturer in the Community and Social Development. Uh, and today I've come uh, so that we can have an in interview around issues of gender-based violence, uh, the relationship that is there uh, between issues of gender-based violence and art, and uh, how we see maybe you as artists, your role that you are playing in addressing issues of gender-based violence. Maybe you can introduce yourself uh, and also a number of years, especially in the uh, music industry. Okay, my name is Clive Mukundu, but I'm better known as Mono. Um, I've been in the music industry for 34 years, and uh, basically my core business at the moment is music production, but I'm also a multi-instrumentalist. I'm an author, I've published three books so far, two are music-based, and the third one is called Main Vacuum, which is um, a book that's addressing male issues. Because I feel that they are being neglected these days. Everybody is concentrating on the girl child and uh, everything about women, and no one is concentrating on men. But right now, if you notice around the world, uh, the number of suicides of men have gone up. If you check in wars, it's men who die more than women. And even when we talk of cancers, prostate cancer kills a lot of people, maybe more than even such uh, cancers like breast cancer but all the attention is given to breast cancer and uh, process cancer is ignored or given very little attention so my book is addressing those issues on um, the forgotten male issues as well as encouraging the boy child as you know these days everybody is talking about toxic masculinity yeah. it seems yeah. like being a man is a crime or there's something wrong about being a man so those are some of the issues that are being addressed in that uh, book called Main Vacuum. I published it um, 2020 when I turned 50. Wow. So I thought uh, since I've turned 50, I've got something to say and uh, maybe I needed to write something that's not about music. All right. Yeah. Ah, that's, that's, that's great. Interesting. I think I would love to, <laughs> to get a copy of that book. Uh, how is gender-based violence portrayed uh, in popular culture in Zimbabwe? or around also the music circles and, and art. How do artists view it? Do they speak about it? Or is something, it's a no-go area for them? Um, there are artists who speak about it, but uh, just as I've alluded to earlier, most of the, uh, the discourse is addressing um, gender-based violence, which is targeted at women. But uh, it seems like people forget that men are also victims of gender-based violence. But the problem is men, naturally, we are, when we are stressed, we don't speak out. And uh, we shut down and women speak out a lot. And, it seems, and sometimes even if the women are the perpetrators, they are more ahead than men. Because uh, for some funny reason, um, people just think it's funny even if you report to the police. Sometimes the police don't take you seriously. But my point is, I'm not saying there's no gender-based violence against women, but I'm saying we should look at both sides so that we have a balance instead of just concentrating on one gender. All right, it's yeah. fine. Are the artists in for it uh, in terms of addressing issues of gender-based violence, in terms of their production, in terms of their music choice, to say, no, I have this particular song to address this social ill. Like you are saying that also the issues of men under-reporting, the issues of also women being abused. Do artists come up with songs to address those things or it's actually from NGOs who push artists to... Yeah, I think that's a very good question because uh, I think the bulk of the, of the music that addresses such issues these days, the music is usually commissioned by, by, by organizations. But before... Before the digital era, artists like Oliver Mtukuzi, John Chibadu, um, in fact, most yesteryear artists from the previous generation, from my generation, uh, they used to address those issues a lot and uh, without being commissioned by any organization. So I think it's something that uh, the modern generation needs to, to look at because right now we've got a lot of music that addresses a lot of uh, issues which are not, uh, some of them are not even sensible. So I think as artists we need to 
do more, especially the modern artists. Okay. I, 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 I like your reference to yesterday. You're actually referring to artists like John Chibadura, Oliver Mtukudzi, mm. uh, the song such as Toze Zababa, yeah, exactly. addressing you know issues of um, gender-based violence. But maybe let's let's take it to uh, the young artists. Are they doing more to to speak against this issue? Are local artists, I mean the modern ones, the most recent ones, are they doing enough to address this social ill that is uh, taking a toll on our society? I think modern artists these days are now concentrating more on mafaro negunakirwa music ngonakirwa yeah without social commentary. So I think there's a decline in social commentary music. Because if you look at um, yesterday music, there was a lot of social commentary on various issues. If you remember Edwin Hama, by Kwira Chingwa, by Badunya Rasong, Yokira Kwichingwa, she chema chemo speaking on behalf of the people. And all the other artists, even there are a lot of artists who are going about. about. They, there was a lot of entertainment, but these days I think artists are now concentrating more on um, and I think that area needs to improve so that uh, we have music with a meaning rather than music just for just for fun. And I know Panama artists like Mamaguna in America. Who, Wantarama State means your children are your responsibilities. And remember, what I sing is uh, it's just for entertainment. It doesn't have, you don't have to worry about what I say. But my daughters, uh, music is not just entertainment. Whatever type of music you listen to affects the way you think, affects the way you dress. Because that's why we have people who dress like Jamaican, they listen to reggae music. We have people who dress like um, American rap artists, they listen to rap music. Every type of music that you listen to, it really affects you. Even the programs that you watch on TV, that's why they are called programs. They program your mind. So whatever you listen to, it controls you. So I think it's every artist's responsibility to make sure that whatever message they deliver to to their audiences is uh, it's a message that uh, uh, preaches positivity. It's a message that preaches peace. It's a message that teaches uh, social values rather than just to entertain people. Interesting. Mm. I, I really liked um, how you put or uh, coined music as something that should provide education as well as also entertainment, which is very, very important. But have you ever engaged artists or musicians about uh, the portrayal of gender-based violence in their work? Yeah, if you ask artists who record here, yeah, every time we do our productions, uh, sometimes they even turn into lecture sessions where I talk to them about uh, various issues. So those issues, I always raise them when we when I work with artists to just help them to, to create content that's, uh, that's very relevant to things that are happening in our societies. So yes, I always encourage artists to, to write such positive lyrics. Thank you so much. I've seen that you have worked with uh, a number of artists such as Wop Masike, Alexio Kawara, um, also Derek Mpofu. But um, I would like to dwell also on their social side uh, in terms of issues of gender-based violence. Artists are also human beings. They also face it. In the music and arts industry, are there cases of, you know, uh, gender-based violence, especially in your type of work. Uh, have artists also come out in the open and complained about, you know, being harassed or whatever, also facing violence uh, in terms of uh, issues uh, that we are talking about? Yeah, yeah, I've had a lot of cases. Because as I've said before, I turned 15, 2020. So in most uh, music circles that I'm involved in, usually I'm the oldest in many cases. So as a result, I've sort of like turned into a de facto counselor, oh. and mentor. <laughs> yeah. A lot of young people, they always come to me and uh, talking about uh, their marriage problems, their relationship problems. And that one is an issue that's uh, very worrying because we've got a lot of artists, uh, especially the, the young men who uh, in, get themselves involved with older women who are financially stable so that they can be taken care of. Because uh, the music industry in Zimbabwe is a very low income industry. 
and uh, with the COVID issue, with the um, downturn of the economy, it was made worse. So as a result, um, most artists end up um, looking for older women to take care of them. And uh, a number of them they end up being uh, abused. I remember one of them telling me that many times he ends up sleeping in the car. The wife will just tell him, get out of my house because it's her house and uh, she's the one who is uh, providing everything and it's just so such things happen a lot. Uh, is because as I mentioned, music in Zimbabwe is a very low income industry. So I always encourage um, musicians, especially those who have been in the industry for some time, Zimbabwe is a very low income industry music. So it helps about the industry. I need full information uh, so that I am not prepared. One, prepared, you face a lot of problems. And you use those who consult my artist manager, I pay three out which room on to older women who are financially stable to achieve it, which cards the Ongo no Tatisra could catch because of that. I don't want to a place and a more money. Then we don't go to change to any marry music, but it marry a change to any green, ne a boyfriend cannot girlfriend. So I think to prevent such issues, I think artists need to be told. I think we pinam industry. Oh, garas, this industry is a very low income industry, and our economy is bad, and the green ne COVID it's even worse. So that I no pinda I need backup plan, so that you don't rely on a spouse. Because relying on his spouse is very dangerous and a lot of people are suffering because of that. All right. Mm. Has your organization responded to these issues with uh, productions or with um, even pieces of advice? Um, unfortunately, you can't really force artists to talk about issues they don't want to talk about. Because uh, I'm just a music producer who produces artists who brings their own songs they have written already. So I've tried that. Sometimes the, some of the artists have taken the advice. Some were not uh, interested. But I'm also somebody who is invited a lot to speak at uh, different functions. I, I'm invited to speak at uh, music functions, album launches, even music that's not recorded here. I mean, invited to speak at men's conferences and um, other um, conferences. So every time I speak and every time I get an opportunity to talk about that, those issues, I do talk about them. Like last month, I was invited at the men's conference organized by um, Island Hospice. And in my speech, I also mentioned those issues. So answering your question, yes, I really talk about those issues and I really address them every time I get an opportunity. How can organizations like yours combat what we say, the sexualization of women in music and popular art? Especially how women are treated, you know, they are treated as sexual objects, or can that be solved? Okay, in general, there are certain things that are just natural, we cannot do away with it. For example, uh, women many times are seen as sexual objects, and men are always seen as success objects. That's why every time if you're a man, uh, people ask you where you work because they want to calculate how much they can respect you. And they, every time you get a new girlfriend, people ask about beauty. You ask about a new boyfriend, a friend, they want to buy a friend. So, women are taken as sexual objects. And then you have to think about how much you can respect women. Taken as sex object and men are taken as success objects, but Chakaipa is to abuse those elements. Because if you look at it, there are many women who love to be objectified. If you look at Instagram, at Facebook, pane wakawa na unguda ma picture chera za ma structure au ma machitamba zuri sexually subjective. That's objectification. They are objectifying themselves vega. And wa majan tu tarotim. You can't afford me. Chinchino zi chine affordability is an object. Okay. So you'll be, <laughs> she'll be objectifying yourself. So there are many women who actually love to be objectified. Because if you present yourself as a sex, sexual object, um, even in social media, my picture is on a poster, there are is and my sexual connotation, you are advertising your sexuality. Then you expect men to, to love you for your for your brains. You don't go sexuality. So I think when it comes to objectification, we need to look at both sides. Because there are many women who really love to be objectified. 
Vantunya zira vega, wanu posta ma picture, sexually suggestive, even ne content ima wanu post, especially a lot of ma socialites. So those women, they really love to be objectified. Then coming to music videos, um, music videos, no one is forced to come and shake their waist or shake their their backside. They are, they are paid, they are offered money, and they come on their own. So it's something that um, they offer themselves. So I can say they also love it. In the work with, uh, no one is forcing, it's part of their work. No <laughs> okay. one is forcing them. Okay. And you know, what I'm trying to my Instagram models, you see, I don't go around and go post things that are sexually suggestive on social media. So can we say, I uh, mean, are wrong? Because we are objectified. We are because you are because we are because we are because present. We because by nature, as men, we are visually stimulated to further go on. When you are saying we are going to be the Daily Mail, you go UK. Wajitaa sauti, zinonya nyugura na newa nwaenda on vacation chi. Ndi number one yanga ni nye kutu warume wa itas wa kazi wa sinu wa kazi wa simira zuka nari. And those are white men. Okay. Bozi wano jinyo wano zodata ngote warume chite marume chite. That has nothing to do with the race. It's a male species phenomenon. It's natural. Maybe that's why there were no inventions wa kazi wa sato wa nazo fake. Well, look at us, my inventions, my jeans, I guess, where I guess, I guess, I guess, I think men could concentrate on what I do to knock out those nonas of fake. But I applaud what you are discover more to post the discovered fire because of the nonas of fake. So I wonder how they did it. I wonder how they concentrated. But my point is, if it's done negatively, can I find a man or a It's bad. No one is forcing anybody to post picture of my garage on Facebook and Instagram. That's objectification. And can I still fake a hembe? I don't want to fake a hembe for themselves. They say to fake a hembe for everybody. Because you can fake a hembe, you can have somebody who can fit and you can have somebody who can fit and you can have somebody who can fit and you can have somebody who can fit. Why? Because you are concerned about it. So you are fake and you can have fake for himself. I don't fake my page. I don't want to know that. But can I speak as a little bit of a road you are addressing for everybody? All yeah. right, interesting. But there are some other women who say, you know, the music industry is dominated by men. And uh, some other times we are forced to do things that we do not want because maybe I'm a, B, uh, I'm a BV for this male artist. I'm, we are going on a, on a tour. I have to do one, two, three things so that I can be part of the tour, you know. Are these tours done on you know, uh, at par with men, I mean the relationship that will be the women, do they do more to go on those tours or you are just uh, selected based on your excellence or performance? Okay, number one, no one wants to hire somebody who has got no talent just because you have slept with them because it affects your music. Okay. One of no one is going to hire <laughs> just because and uh, number two, when it comes to, I've had accusations of women saying that uh, there are singers or even music producers who say they want to exchange sex for, 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 for studio time or for going on tour. It might happen in some cases because we are human, things happen. But what my point is, let's look at both sides. There are also women who offer themselves. It happens here. And the other time, there was one who offered me and I refused and she wanted to, 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 to go to the papers and turn the story around and say that I'm the one who was asking for sexual favors for, for studio time. But luckily for me, I still had all your texts. I didn't offer sex. So if I didn't have those texts, I'm going to be wearing a newspaper. And these days, I'm going to go post work on the nigi and abuser. When it comes to such issues, those are, he said, she said, the issues, those issues, they need to be uh, given due process. If somebody accuses somebody of something, I think in my own view, even by newspaper, it's not supposed to be there until um, everybody's proven clean. Right now, everybody says, there are a lot of men who were released from prison recently because of my DNA tests. Just because people just want to believe women. Do, do. So you just want to believe women, all of them, just because I'm going to tower and then I'm going to believe. So a lot of men were put in jail, watching the Wakari Pawkazi, 
after pazu ya nyedzi ma DNA cause ni cheko kwa kuna they were innocent wana so nyedzi dziri both ways hansi kuru amba kutu kuna warumu wana jiti but also let's not forget kuna wakazi wana offer food there are a lot of women who offer their own bodies for, 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 for favors wana saka it's something chiri both sides Let's not look at uh, Boza I right now say like I mentioned earlier but when we go to kids we need to this kids we need to that let's look at you or my kids what they offer we get it happen it is happened to me many times it has happened to other it is many times wana but every time mun akabato kana zvakuita ngi zvakunyadzisa they always turn the side around over to rota I'm the victim but ari akatanga in the kids special like ngo chema chet they are believed one is our mat kwanzo ngo chema pese pese then tista kutoroerero one so when such issues come i think they should be given due process so that you verify both sides and uh, exonerate the one who is uh, innocent interesting uh male artists also facing this phenomenon of being you know um sexually abused by women are they facing those things especially when they go for shows or whatever are they also facing this threat of being you know uh, sexually abused even after performing or whatever even we are uh, with the members of the band yeah in the english dictionary there's a word called groupy groupy is women who offer themselves for sex to male musicians and uh, it happens worldwide not only in zimbabwe in fact the word ragato gadzirwa ne group not the rolling stones is something that happens worldwide women who follow my missions and sometimes they throw themselves at the other imagine if yes. it was a female artist performing murumo kanda ndo ya on stage ya inz abuse and yet nyaiwe to shika kure but just because it's a woman who threw a bra kune munhu wechirume it was just brushed off so such cases they happen a lot where women uh, approach my artists uh, for for sex and wamwe vanoita zvintone abuse mukati kana zvintone sexual violation mukati kutanga ngokubata zvisirizo it has happened to me it has happened to a lot of people but uh, like i always like i said before uh, kana zvaitika murume yeah, it's just brushed off but kana zvaitika mukadzi it's a big issue one so i think we need to look at both ends uh, ends of the story all right so maybe uh what are your recommendations in terms of issues of uh, legislation uh, on issues of gender based violence okay my recommendation is number one, let's demolish these organizations and say chaku chaku for women hey, girl rights this let's just have my organizations that are for rights period for human rights period if a man is abused they, 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 they should take action if a woman is abused, abused they should take action because we've, we've seen cases where a man has been abused and uh, uh, some gender groups just because they are just for women they don't look at the case because on that it's not our mind that we are just there for women can look at the gender let's look, have a ministry for gender you know that's uh, both sides not just the women because people now have a mistake of what the word gender means women and um, i remember there are even some studies in most universities not gender studies ukata some most of these materials are pamoju pa pamamoju ziweka it's just um, an introduction to radical feminism and most of the stuff <laughs> most of the stuff okay. they teach is not yeah. based on data it's based on emotions like mama zvero kunzanzi gender is a social construct that's nonsense gender is not a social construct gender is natural and it's attached to sex if you look for for in story knows the john juan case of canada waka socialize a boy akazorwa ari mukumana and then tend him to a girl through plastic surgery pamba ima women zvita zvobuda mazamu and so forth pam socialize into a girl but angukura achingo feel out into mukumana ati wazobvunza akura pakodzo chikwadi committed suicide that's proof yekura dzoti gender is not a social construct of course we do have people who are one you know gender disparity yekuti anenge ari mukumana but achingo actor like mskana mumskana chector like mukumana anozo matomboy waya we cannot say kuti they were socialized i mean kuti it's natural kure mara one just because pane muna azvara vaine zvigunwe 6 hatingatanga kuti dzitsa vana kuti a hand is a ngirini ine zvigunwe 6 just because kuno akare mara vane zvigunwe 6 one that's an abnormality but that's not the the mainstream so my point is uh, let's not just look at um, one side let's just have an organization that looks at my rights as and number 3 ma issues akaita sema rights rights akaita pakuita problem yekuti most of them have been monetized 
one so the people are just making money out of them and when a cause is monetized find the problem people will start inventing problems a sequel for the sake of relevance so that money uh, keeps coming in and those must look it up when it comes to the gender and yet the violence it's the find out to me 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 to wana but wana wana wangu tutaura for the sake of marira mbejita se jwa kuti muno pesa mwa tswaka tumwe tumari sin to resource stupid for the simple reason you want to remain relevant and those who kitika panya dzi gender dzo dzi bozo kwaona pane ma a lot of my issues hango raise kwa mazondo like anambo taura yekunza nzi kune toxic masculinity how can masculinity be toxic kwa wakazi are they perfect hakuna toxic femininity why wana bozo if masculinity is toxic where is toxic femininity and the murume kana ita problem kana ita ita crime let's not blame it on the gender that's a criminal offense that's not a gender offense one you can say kuti uh, commit a crime aura ya munhu just because murume so it's toxic masculinity no it's a toxic behavior it's a crime muno anofana usungwa that is nothing to do with masculinity that is everything to do with criminality one so we need to balance those things so my recommendation is let's stop looking at one side then number four, you asked about um, why warmosnga report one of the reasons is nyaya kuti unosekwa eh unosekwa kana report kuti ndabizwa nemukadzi vana vanotoka kuseka mapurisa acha ndoseka okay oh, no. all right i have seen that you have organized um, uh, shows you have organized events recently i followed you um, on facebook you are talking about chiwoniso maraire and um, The, the show that you did for for her together with her daughter um one thing that i would want to ask is a follow up question is uh, musicians uh, how we also view you is uh, you have an impact in the society you have also a say in the society on almost everything and directly or indirectly the music affects the behavior of people and can actually program a society to uh, to behave in a certain way has your organization used any form of art um, such as music performances or programs if you done programs maybe to combat these issues that we are talking about gender based violence the issues of suicide that we raising if you done maybe a concert or whatever program that you 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 have done to combat these issues um organizing programs uh, takes money and um if you if we get funding we are very much interested uh, the shows that you've mentioned those shows were just helping artists who were organizing those shows they had their funding i don't know i'm one of them funding somewhere but is monolith studios if we get funding to 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 to, to organize such shows we are willing all but um all right it's fine but um you uh, do you think those shows can have an impact maybe in the society in terms of change of behavior i think they will because music is a very powerful weapon i also wish we could get funding so that we even address needs my drugs but uh, as i've said needs funding does not need yeah ah uh, thank you so much thank you mr mono mkundu for thank your you time very much. thank you you are welcome uh, i really enjoyed yeah, thank, thank you, you so much, much uh, for for everything one thing that i have to say is everything that you do has an impact there are people watching some <laughs> cannot even tell you that we are watching but so you will find ourselves here mm. it has it will give reference to what you have done even over the years thank you so much ah, thanks so much. all right well it's monosophical it is what it is we say it like it like it like it like it, like it.